Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be a little different of an episode. Uh, I'm going to be doing narration during the warp drive. Um, that's basically, you know, because, well, there's several reasons. One that had to do with a memory card that failed uh, on other videos uh, that related to this. And music, well, uh, I'm trying to avoid copyright strikes. Thanks for following along. I hope you like this episode and uh, enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, back for another day of working on the airplane. Today, the goal is to remove the uh, crank handle that moves my flaps back and forth, measure it out so for, uh, for the uh, um, linear actuator that I purchased for that, and then uh, remove the rod and cut it down and all that kind of good stuff and get it ready for the linear actuator. Um, and, um, yeah, so follow along with uh, the exciting next episode. Follow me. What follows is a brief construction montage. Well, here we go. I'm going to do this all in one take. Uh, I wonder if I should get my red-green voice on. Nah. <laughs> this is kind of like Adventures with Bill and Red Green. If you've ever seen the Red Green show, you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyways, here I am, running back and forth to the toolbox, trying to get the right wrenches and tools, as is usual. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be narrating this entire video. Uh, it's all been sped up and trimmed and edited, and uh, I'll actually point out the editing cuts. I'm doing this all with one camera. I don't have multiple cameras, so I have one camera, so which means that when you see a cut and you see me walking towards and away and what kind of stuff, that means I've got to pick up the camera, relocate it, walk back my steps, and walk that same path again two or three times in order to make it look like it's all done with multiple cameras and I have a big production crew and everything else with me. Um, so yeah, that's the movie magic. I'm, uh, I'm learning. Uh, I'm watching other um, YouTubers, how they do these things. I'm going, hey, I think they're doing that with one camera, which means they walk the same path or something several times to get these shots. So here we are, uh, again, back to the video at hand. Uh, I'm working diligently removing the nuts and bolts that hold that crank handle uh, over my head uh, that is used to uh, lower the flaps and, of course, use it for trim. Now, um, yeah, I've got the crank handle off. If you look, you can see that. And now I'm going to remove the linear uh, uh, nothing later, sorry. I'm going to remove the rod. Uh, no editing here. Okay, this is all one shot live. We'll see if we can do it. Uh, so I'm going to be removing the rod from the back a little plate that slides back and forth that uh, is then connected to the flaps and uh, or flapperons as they are called. Uh, because they're dual duty. They're ailerons and they're, and they're also flaps. Now you see there I'm, I'm positioning the linear actuator kind of where I want it and uh, there will be a change to this as well um, uh, later on I, I, I move it even closer um, realizing that I, I want uh, a little more space in front of it but for now I'm kind of mounting it where I think I want to put it and uh, before I change my mind and which I am apt to do a lot of and once again, back to the toolbox, getting warm in the hangar. Uh, just a little update over here. This is being posted in the, uh, uh, I believe, August of 2021. Um, the late August 2021, I'm posting this. But this was actually recorded, uh, I believe this is in January of uh, 2021, or um, end of January or in the early February. So it's winter outside. And um, so the heaters um, are, are, are set low for the hangar. Uh, they keep it above freezing all winter long. And when you walk in, you turn a little timer dealy that um, switches to the other thermostat that brings it up to a workable temperature. But it takes a little while to get there. So you kind of wear a jacket for a while. And then when the hangar warms up to... Uh, working temperature, you know, it's, uh, you can take the jacket off as I've done. Oh, there we go. I'm cleaning up. You notice those, uh, that newspaper with the red on there? Well, that was from painting the uh, the um, inspection 
um, whole covers. And uh, from a previous episode, which was so exciting, I know, with the painting and so on. But here I am, I'm, uh, I'm uh, grabbing some uh, tools, uh, drill bits, and uh, which are, see I'm opening a plastic bag that came from Aircraft Spruce. Um, they are, I believe, the number 30 bits for the, for the rivet. And um, I had uh, 10 of them uh, when I first started this, but uh, I dulled a bunch, I broke a few, you know, as usual. And um, you're going to see me doing it again. Oh, there we go. Rapid tap. That's the um, cutting and tapping oil. And I'm putting it on a steel rivet, and I'm making a mistake right there. As you can see, I'm inspecting the tip. Oh, what's going on here? I heard a snap sound. Well, what that is is uh, I applied pressure, then started the drill rotating, and it's a, a very hardened bit, and it grabbed onto the steel rivet and snapped the um, uh, sharp edges off, which I put the reading glasses on to take a look at, and it's a good thing that um, there's no audio. Oh, there we go. See that little cut there? That was me moving the camera and then and then walking away and walking back into frame again make it look like I had another camera whoa so now I'm putting the drill bit in a drill press and uh, starting the press so the bit spins then slowly lowering it onto the steel the rivet which now means that it's not going to snap because when it grabbed the rivet and I turned the drill on it bit into it and snapped the sharp edges off the drill bit dummy I should know that I've been doing this for years decades but uh, you know sometimes you just get complacent so yes always start your drill rotating first then apply it to your work um, otherwise you run the risk of, of, of snapping your drill bits there we go I'm, I'm done I've, um, I've drilled the rivets out on the one side of that um, rod for the flaperons now I'm dumping the bits and pieces that are still in the rod out, getting a, a rag, and cleaning off the oils from the cutting oil, and uh, kind of cleaning up a little bit of mess there, and there we go. Yeah, uh, now I'm going to look at uh, where I want, how close I want this in. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move it as close as possible, <laughs> so, and I will be uh, uh, sliding it in there, put a tiny drop of cutting oil, now this is an aluminum tube, so it's not going to snap a bit uh, if you start with it on there but uh, I'm, I'm now going back to what I always knew was the right way to do it to start the drill spinning before you apply it on, uh, on a steel uh, workplace so uh, I put a Clico in that first hole to hold it in place because there are three holes in this rod and so the the first hole uh, with the is held with the Clico as you can see and uh, then I drilled the other two holes now I'm getting some uh, steel rivets and my hand riveter oh, knock out all the shavings don't want that rattling around there forever and uh, back goes the Clico insert a rivet take hand riveter and pop oh hang on no right there pop there we go wang that's why they call them pop rivets but these are actually cherry rivets that i'm using uh from aircraft spruce i'm not using the pop brand rivets i'm using cherry remove the uh, uh clico and do the next riveting yay thumbs up there we go i'm happy and um so there you go now I'm cleaning up my tools, putting them back. I, I've gotten into the habit of that years ago, that when you're finished working on something, uh, put the tools exactly back where they came from, wipe them down right away. It takes a few seconds out of your work day. But what that happens is that you don't leave tools sitting on a bench and then go hunting around, where the heck did I put that wrench? Where's that wrench? Well, it's underneath something because you left it on a bench and then something got slid over top of it. Now it's hiding and you spent a half an hour looking for it. And um, that's happened to me an awful lot of times. So I put my tools back away into the toolbox, wipe them down, I want to finish working on a phase of a project and, uh, and try to clean up the site as best I can. I get a little lazy with that here and there, but I still do it. And there we go. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm tightening that rod back on there. Um, now, as I mentioned, there was a memory card uh, issue. Uh, I lost a bunch of footage when I actually installed the linear actuator, which also involved me taking that rod back off again and shortening it again. And um, I've uh, I've been talking about making a little lever to convert the two-inch throw to one and a half-inch throw. Well, 
that also changed. And uh, I'm going to cover that in a, another episode, which will be mostly narration, because it's going to have to be photographs and me explaining what I did. But that's it for now. Thanks a lot for uh, bearing with me. And back to the uh, live action. We hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. Okay, well, that was the shortening of the push-pull rod for the flaps, removal of the bell crank that controls that, and I am going to have to fashion um, a uh, lever so that I can transfer the two-inch throw of this linear actuator to the one and a quarter inch throw back and forth that the flaps have. Now I'm going to measure it uh, one more time just to make sure uh, if I can go, I mean if I could use it as a full two inch throw, great, but I don't think so. I think i got to do the reduction to the one and a quarter inch throw on the rod to the two inch here, which isn't very hard to do. So that's going to be a little bit of a cutting and designing and I'll bring you along for that. I think well. that's going to be it for today. Uh, it's going to be a short addition. To, uh, to this uh, saga of me rebuilding the, uh, the airplane. Hope to see you again. Thank you all very much. And uh, down in the corner there, there's a little subscribe and a little bell thing. Go ahead and click and click. And uh, uh, leave me a comment if you like what I'm doing. Um, and uh, mean and nasty comments too, whatever. You know, they're all comments. Um, let me know if you see something that, uh, that I might try. Now, bear in mind, the time that I'm recording these videos and the time that they're posted uh, may be a few months down the road. I'm recording a whole bunch of stuff and then I'm archiving them and then I'm starting to work on the, you know, processing these videos and, and making them you know, kind of look prettier as best I can, being a newbie. Uh, so you might not, you know, this might be a few months delayed, but that's okay. If you have a suggestion, that doesn't mean that I can't sometimes in the future say, hey, that's a great suggestion. I'm going to park the airplane in the hangar for, uh, for a couple of days and apply it. So if you've got something that, uh, that you've done that made a huge improvement, let me know. I really appreciate it. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, we'll talk to you again shortly, I hope. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Let me know what you think of this uh, format, uh, if you'd like to see more of it, or if you like uh, the other formats. I'm still trying to figure this out. Have yourself a great time, and glad you showed up. Bye-bye.